If you own the A1 or A1 mini without the AMS light combo, you know the struggle. Every time you want to change a color or even just swap pools, you have to do it manually. It interrupts the workflow and honestly it gets old pretty fast. So I finally picked up the BMCU 370B. It's a third party alternative to the AMS light. Now some of you might already know about this project but I have been testing it out to see if it actually reliable. Here is why I went with this instead of the official AMS light and how I integrated it with those DIY dry boxes that we built last time. If you haven't seen that video, go ahead and watch it. It's very easy to build. Now there are two reasons why I bought BMCU, not the AMS light from the Bamboo Lab. First is the price and the second one is space. The AMS light is close to 20,000 rupees if you buy it separately. Even in the combo, it adds a huge chunk to the cost, around 15,000 rupees. But more importantly, it takes up a lot of text space. And I really don't like mounting four heavy spools on top of a high speed printer. The vibration just makes me nervous. And I wanted something I could mount on the wall of the table. Now the shipping was expensive. It was around $40. So to make that cost digestible, I added four hardened steel nozzles to the order. These include 0 0.2, 4, 6 and 0 0.8 mm nozzles. In India, these nozzles alone cost over 1000 rupees, close to 1200 or something. By bundling them, I got them for about 590 rupees per piece. So if you plan to import this, definitely stock up on the nozzles to make the shipping worth it. Now for the installation, I wanted to keep it clean. Remember those 500 rupees serial containers dry boxes? I cleared a space in the middle of my rail system and printed a simple wall mount for the BMCU. It fits perfectly between the dry boxes and it keeps the table completely clear and the filament path is straight and short. Now there is one critical step you cannot skip. The BMCU requires firmware version 1.05. It's clearly mentioned in their instruction guide. My printer was already running on 1.07, so I had to downgrade it. You can do this right inside the Bamboo Handy app. So go to Bamboo Handy app and go to the hamburger menu, find the firmware version, select 105 and hit the downgrade. It takes about five minutes. Just make sure your printer doesn't lose power during this process. Now, once the firmware is ready, turn the printer off. Seriously, unplug it. I did the same. You do not want to short anything while connecting those AMS connector. Now connect the AMS cable to the unit, watch the orientation carefully and then to the printer. Again, printer should be off. Now when you power it back and go to the filament tab, you will see AMS detected. The best thing about this unit is that it uses Hall effect sensors and bi-directional buffering, meaning you don't have to force anything. You just have to push the filament gently, the gears automatically grabs it and pulls it in. It feels very smooth, no grinding, no jamming. We also ran a test print swapping from white to blue. It handles the retractions and feeding exactly like the original mechanism of AMS Lite. The print came out great and the layer lines looked great. So is it worth it? I would say definitely, but I have one piece of advice buy the pre-assembled unit. As a DIY guy, we love building kits to save money, but the price difference is only two to 3,000 rupees. Assembling these gears and sensors manually is a pain. It's delicate and if you mess it up, you will end up spending more to fix it. Just pay the extra for the plug and play version. It saves you a lot of headache. But if you still want to go by that route, you will be able to save at least three to four thousand rupees because it's very cheap it will cost you around 53 or 5600 rupees if you buy it from the triangle labs or even from alibaba now let's talk about the drawbacks or the flaws in this device so one of the flaws that i have experienced was initially when i like feeded the filament it automatically pulls it in and pushes it forward. But there was one time when it was pushing and it was not able to push because that PTFE was like curved. The motor was continuously revolving and it was not able to push. So I had to like pull that lever uh, towards me in order to, you know, uh, give it a little pressure. 
So I think those springs that are installed are not pushing strongly. So that was my initial thought. But then when I did that, after that, I didn't have to do anything. It was automatically feeding, retracting, pulling and doing everything. So yeah, initially, if you are like pushing the filament, uh, or like inserting the filament into the AMS, you might have to assist it in order to push it fully till the bamboo labs uh, nozzle, you know, PTFE connector. And once that is done, you don't have to do it. It will automatically retract pull and do all of that. The second issue that I experienced, and I don't know if this is the case with the AMS light also, the official one, is that if the printer shutdowns uh, or like there's, there's a power failure before it, cuts the filament and retracts it the next time you turn it on it won't be able to detect like where's the filament so it will ask you like uh, not able to find so it will show you that error but in that case all you have to do is just manually cut the cable and pull it from the printer and then you can start the print job and it will automatically you know take the filament and retract and you know start doing its job which is printing. So yeah, it sometimes may lead to that error, but I'm not sure if it also happens in AMS Lite. If anyone of you watching this own the AMS Lite, do let me know if that happens with you as well. So that's the setup. Now my A1 feels like a complete machine. I will drop links to the store where I got the unit and those cheap nozzles in the description. Now, if you have any question about the firmware or the BMC unit or the mounting, Ask me in the comments and I'll happy to answer. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next.